Hello, and welcome to the third devlog. Honestly, this is a little overwhelming. Uh, after being excited in the second devlog for gaining 18 subs, I feel a little silly now that the channel's at 1800. And I just wanted to welcome all the new subscribers to the channel and say thank you to everyone for leaving such positive comments and feedback in the last devlog. There are so many people here now compared to the first devlog that I feel like I need to introduce myself. My name is Graham, I'm the developer of this game, and yes, I'm still thinking of a name for it. Uh, I'm working on this game in my free time as I have a full-time job, so if the development seems a little bit slow, I apologize. If you haven't watched the first devlog, this is my first project, as I have no game dev experience, so this is going to be a bit of an adventure for me. Uh, but because of this, if you have any tips or suggestions, they're more than welcome. Okay, so without further ado, let's jump into what I've been working on for the last two weeks. They all informed me that it actually just looked like a penis. Uh, but that was okay because I planned on redrawing the item sprite anyway because it was pixel art. Yep, second only to tips on how I could curve the projectiles. Between this and the first devlog I'm starting to think that I might have a problem. But now as you can see the rat's bottom half is fixed. Okay, so now the main issue for the devlog is out of the way, I can mark that as complete. I figured it was time to get organized, so I stopped writing down everything that I needed to do in a Google Doc and moved it all to a Kanban board. So hopefully this helps with my productivity. Now, before we get into the hot debate over the best way to apply curving to projectiles, I'll talk about the projectile sprites for a second. From the last devlog, I still needed to switch them over from pixel art placeholders into the new drawn form. I redrew two of the projectile sprites. One is from the spider projectiles that will fire out in a radius around the spider, slowing players on collision, and the other is just the basic enemy projectile. The basic enemy projectile I changed into a triangle. I made this change to better show the direction that the projectile is traveling, and because of this, I needed to add a line to my projectile script that rotated the projectile based on the velocity direction. I'm also not 100% satisfied with how the basic enemy projectile turned out. To me, it kind of looks like an ice cream cone without the ice cream inside of it. I'm not sure how I feel about that, but I'm going to keep it how it is for now, and we'll maybe update it in the future. After that one was done, I made the spider projectile look more like a spider web. I'm not completely happy with this one either, but at least it actually looks like a spider web. I would have liked to have it look more like a ball of web being shot, but I couldn't get it to look quite right. But I'll continue to think about this and probably redraw it pretty soon. Now, onto the good stuff. Before I explain the solution that I used, I'll outline the problem again. In the previous devlog, the spider was firing projectiles in a radius around itself in a straight line. I wanted this line to curve slightly on an angle, making it harder for the player to dodge the projectiles. And I cannot thank you guys enough for all the tips that you left in the comments section. I did try for a while to write the script in a way that the projectiles curved, but in the end I decided that in the future, if I wanted to add more variations to the projectiles path, that I needed something more scalable. Because of this, I decided to update my Unity from 2021 to 2022 and test out Unity's new spline component. I'm not going to lie to you, I've never worked with splines before, so it took me a bit to figure out how to get this working, but eventually I got it working so that the spider script instantiates a spline path and animates the projectile along the path and then destroys the entire thing. I don't think that the spline path is perfect right now, but I'm just happy that something's working. Being able to save these splines as prefabs gives me a lot of flexibility in the future to instantiate any projectile path that I want to use. Alright, let's talk about tile maps. I realize that this cave room must be pretty boring to look at for the last three devlogs, and I've mentioned a few times that this is supposed to be a forest, and that the cave slash runes area is going to be a part of the later floors, so I think it makes sense to start working on the forest area now. I started working on obstacle sprites that I can use in these forest levels. I made this sort of stone pillar as well as a rock sprite. I also worked on making this bush and made two different trees that could be used. 
but I only ended up using the pine tree sprite, at least for now. And here I'm working on the actual tile map for the forest area. I had a really hard time figuring out how to get this looking right. I don't know if it was the switch from pixel art to Krita, but I was not liking how the wall sprite and the ground sprites were turning out. I was originally going to have a dirt wall surrounding the room, almost as if the room was sunken into the ground. I didn't really like this idea because then, outside of those walls, I would have to individually copy a whole bunch of trees to give the illusion of being inside of a forest, and I'm not sure how that would have worked out with the potential room generation script. I think instead I'm going to go with a sort of masking effect where the edges of the room fade out into darkness, almost as if the leaves and branches of the forest are getting too thick to pass. What I'm about to show you isn't the final version of this by any means, in fact I actually made a pretty big mistake while making this area. Without thinking, I made everything look a little too lush and peaceful, as you'll see in the sprites which don't exactly fit with the tone of the game that I'm trying to make. I think I got too wrapped up in being able to just make these sprites that I wasn't paying attention to the overall theme. I don't think I've mentioned this in previous devlogs, but in terms of inspiration for the forest area, I'm looking at fantasy forests like Mirkwood from Lord of the Rings. And if any of you know Mirkwood, what I've drawn here is pretty much the exact opposite. So needless to say, I'm going to have to make some changes. But I want to sit and think about this for a little while longer. So let's talk about enemy debuffs for now. I started working on a debuff system that applies debuffs to the player when an enemy lands an attack that has a debuff effect applied to it. Figuring out how to do this in a way that wasn't a mess took up more time than I'd like to admit. Essentially, how I was doing it originally was, inside of the enemy projectile code, I would apply a debuff to the player's movement speed for a certain amount of time using a coroutine. However, this wouldn't work because when the bullet impacted the player, it would apply the debuff, but then the game object would be destroyed, breaking the coroutine. I needed a way to apply the debuff effect for a set duration and remove the debuff even after the game object was destroyed, but eventually my brain expanded and I learned about interfaces. This ended up being exactly what I needed. A way to apply an effect for a duration and remove it once that duration was over. I was able to finish writing this code, but I still need some sort of visual indicator to show that the player has a debuff. While we're talking about changing the player's stats, I threw together some new item sprites. I feel like if I keep adding a couple of items every video, eventually I'll have a pretty robust selection. And speaking of items, we need to talk about the item buffing system. I implemented it in the previous devlog. Right now, the current way I have the items applying buffs to the player works fine as long as the buff is a static value and doesn't have a duration. For example, a flat damage or movement speed buff to the player is fine, but let's say I want an item to apply fire damage to the player's projectile that burns the enemies for 3 seconds. This cannot be accomplished with the current way I've written the code. And because of this, I think the next thing I'm going to work on is transitioning the item buffing script over to the interfaces script. Something I can't really show anything for that I've been thinking about a lot this last week is the overall story of this game and what might make it a unique experience. The story is going to be a little loose, but I have been working on some dialogue for the wizard that I showed at the end of the first devlog. I also think I've thought of a unique system that might make the gameplay somewhat anxiety inducing, but I'll keep that to myself for now. Okay, and that's all I have for this devlog. Once again, I can't thank you guys enough for the overwhelming amount of positive comments regarding the devlogs. It really means a lot. The next devlog is going to be in another two weeks, but in the meantime, I've been getting some requests to do a tutorial on how I create my sprites. So next week, I plan to release a video going through the workflow of drawing the sprite in Krita, importing it into Unity, and animating it. So yeah, I'll see you then.